Hi everyone, it's time for the flip through of my 2021 bullet journals. I've chosen some relaxing background music for you to enjoy and I'll talk about some of the spreads as I come across them. This was my 2021 bullet journal setup and it makes me so happy to see because it reminds me of when I shared it on YouTube. The huge positive response really surprised me and I realised there were so many people out there who appreciated mindful journaling spreads. I have annual mood and wellness trackers that I set up every year so I'm able to see it all on one page and then I can spot patterns like how yoga and exercise really slow down over the summer so I can be aware of that next year. These were my reminders for the year which I included in some of my monthly setups too when I thought I needed to revisit some of them like focus on what I can control when at times it felt like everything was out of my control. It was really helpful looking back on this and including it in the monthly spreads. Looking at my words of the year, there was definitely balance, freedom, fun, mindfulness, and most of the others. There was maybe a lack of focus, which happens to be part of my 2022 goals. I really enjoyed simple themes in 2021 like this one. They were so relaxing and therapeutic to set up and to look at. These weeklies were so easy to set up. I just released my grid spacing ruler and I was able to just divide up the pages really quickly and add simple stars around the page. It's nice looking back at the vision board that I set up especially because I used pictures from my own life to go with the affirmations. It makes it feel a lot more personal and you really believe that you can do these things because you can see yourself all over the page representing your vision. There's a whole separate video on this which I can link for you in the cards. For International Women's Day, the Bullet Journal account asked us to choose one word to represent women and I chose badass. According to the Urban Dictionary, a badass stays true to themselves, shows kindness, doesn't give up no matter what the challenge, knows what's worth fighting for, knows their limits and doesn't try to look tough. We just are. (laughs) Don't you just think that's the perfect word to describe us? (laughs) I always do a simple things list for the month, which is a list of simple pleasures to enjoy that month, and there's usually seasonal things on there or things related to the month. It's always nice to set up and think about at the time, but also nice to look at after. It kind of gives you a wholesome feeling. One issue, 10 ideas, was a really good spread for when you have an issue to work through in your head. So at points in the year, I was worried about not earning enough through my business. So using this, I wrote down 10 ideas to help with the issue, which actually really helped. Seeing all the options and getting it all out of your head, it feels like a good cleanse and you can then just tackle the problem with a clear head.
I used Archer and Olive Acrylograph pens a lot in my setups this year. I was kind of enjoying the strong colours, they really pop on the page. These next few spreads were for the Mindful March challenge that we did, one mindful activity every day. This language list has really helped me this year. Since writing it, I never say things like I need to or I should or I can't. I now replace that language with things like I want to or I prefer or I get to. And instead of saying I'm not good at this, I'll say I'll keep at it. Using positive language has made so much of a difference to my mind and emotions throughout the year. This is when I started doing some reflection prompts every month. Describing the month in one word really gets you thinking about the month you've had and it combines all of your thoughts and experiences, which is really helpful. I always think having awareness, whether it's awareness of how you're feeling or how you're living, is really valuable. You instantly feel soothed after finding a word to sum it up and it helps you be more intentional about things when you have awareness. This was the first of the journaling prompts that I shared in April, and these were based on the philosophy of Stoicism. These are probably my favourite spreads in my journal, and it's reminded me that I want to do more of this in 2022. Not should, want to. <laughs> this is when I introduced the idea of the motivation wheel and started using my motivation wheel stencil. This was to identify threats, drive and soothing activities based on a psychological theory by Paul Gilbert. I shared the psychology behind it in another video and it's really interesting so if you're interested in psychology and our behaviour and drive then check that one out. I really like seeing this Zentangle theme, it might be my favourite, I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments which theme your favourite is. I started to get into scrapbooking at this point and experimented with different textures and stamps in my journal which was really fun. Sometimes in a weekly spread, I prefer to have categories instead of days and dates. Sometimes you just don't know when you're going to do things, but you need a brain dump of tasks and to know what you're focusing on. And some things that feel good, like gratitude and highlights for the week. Another good way to categorise is to put your tasks into body, achievement, connection and enjoyment. There's a theory that says that a balance of these four areas is ideal for a happy mind and body. There are some spreads that I didn't end up using, which is a shame, but it happens sometimes.
Now onto my journal for the second half of the year. I moved into a B5 journal for the second half of the year just to see how it would feel. And I have to admit, I really struggled with it. I never got quite used to having so much space to work with and it just felt quite intimidating having such a big page. But there are some spreads that I love, like this mid-year quote. And it's a great reminder to look at how far you've come at the midpoint of the year because it's just so easy to focus on how far you've got left to go and get disheartened. This was a check-in with myself at the middle of the year, followed by a check-in on my goals and some fun that I want to have for the rest of the year. August just reminds me of all of the outdoorsy fun that we had, camping and hiking and festivals. It's really making me look forward to next August. I guess that's the benefit of seasonal themes. A true traditional scrapbooking spread that I had to try and um, so I captured my summer memories here in this way. I'm struggling to look at this one because the pages just look so busy to me compared to the rest of my journal but hey you need to try things sometimes. Note to self, I love seeing quotes throughout my journal based on what I'm feeling at the time so I definitely want to keep that for 2022. Lots of quotes. It's nice to see how many different supplies that I tested out throughout the year just to create, even just to create simple spreads. This is really useful for when you don't get round to doing a weekly spread, but at the end of the week you just want to capture some of the things that you've done. Writing it down, even really small things like finally tidying the bedroom, leaves you feeling good about the week and reminds you that you have done stuff. Then I fell in love with the Alistair method for weekly layouts because you can just write down all of your tasks and mark off the day that you're going to do them and if you don't do it you can migrate to the following day or the following week. It's super flexible and really easy to set up as well. And when I was short on time I just did a big header and my task list using the Alistair method. I always love October spreads in my journals, especially this dark academia theme. I love the look and feel of it and the quotes that are just all over the spreads. Maybe this one's the favourite. Sometimes I grab my journal and jot down some notes from a podcast or a book that I'm reading or even an article. I love Jay Shetty's podcast, On Purpose, and this episode was about having the confidence to not ask for advice all the time, and if you do, carefully choose who you talk to, based on four categories. I also love seeing little things like this scattered around the pages. Words that resonated with me this week were, there can never be peace if what you think, what you say and what you do are not in harmony. It's interesting when you start thinking about all of the scenarios that you face in daily life and whether there's alignment with those three things. I talk about stuff like this in my newsletter all the time so feel free to subscribe to that if you want to hear more insights like this. Finally we have December. These two spreads are ready for the last two weeks in December and I did my year-end reflection here using the triumphs and refinements list which I do at the end of every year and I've shared my annual video on this as well and some lists to help me out over the Christmas break 
I really don't like shopping and I don't like impulsive purchases and having things in the house that we don't need. So I have this list to guide me during the Christmas sales because I can write down all of the things that I'm going to buy for the kids and for myself, the sizes and the shops that I usually buy them from. And this way I get all of the shopping done for the year and there's less of a chance of buying useless things when I've thought about it all beforehand and checked what we actually need for the year. This was an interesting concept I came across in a Skillshare class, your authentic self and your false self. It was a tricky list to write because when I was writing down a list of things that I thought were my true self, I didn't know if they were real or things that I wanted to be real. But I guess the point of the exercise was to write down all of the unhelpful behaviours you have and things that you say and appreciate that these are not necessarily your true self. Like when you might say to yourself, just give up or you're not smart enough for this. The true self knows the good stuff about you and will say, you can do this, or you can do anything you want, or you are valued. And the hope is that you bring out more of that true voice and less of the false voice that tries to put you off. Finally, I have some year-end prompts that I wrote a few words on. I wrote down my year in three words, which again is such a good exercise to do. So one thing I would love for you to do after watching this video is let me know one word that you think describes 2021. I had so much fun exploring this online and getting some ideas for my words and I'd really love to hear yours. I have my favourite memory, which is being on a canal boat for a week, even though my kids flooded the boat and we had to end our trip a day early. I have things like time well spent, things that could have gone better, money well spent, smart decisions this year, good habits formed, bad habits broken, and unfinished business that you want to address in 2022. And that's it. That's my year of insights through my journals. Don't forget to leave a comment down below with your one word that represents 2021. And if you really can't think of one, you can put a few down. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.